with this very night and we want him to come and give us the word of God. Pastor Richardson. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace when my Lord so near, leaning on everlasting arm. Oh, we're leaning, yes, we're leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Oh, we're leaning, yes, we're leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, we're leaning. Oh, yes, we're leaning, hallelujah, safe and secure from all alarm. Oh, we're leaning, yes, we're leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What are Fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, we're leaning. Less we're leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, we're leaning, oh yes, we're leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord tonight. Thank the Lord. We can lean upon the Lord. Amen. One scripture said underneath are the everlasting arms. So we can certainly look to the Lord and be of good courage. And the Lord certainly will strengthen our hearts. Can the church say amen? There is no hurt. There is no pain. There is no difficulty that the Lord cannot fix. He cannot do men. One scripture said with God. These things are impossible with, without God, with man, excuse me, these things are impossible. With God, all things are impossible. There's nothing impossible, I should say it like that. Get the scripture right. Can the church say amen? Praise the Lord. There are certain things that are, that are impossible with man, but with God, all things are possible. Can the church say amen? You guys, you guys know what I meant, but we certainly thank the Lord tonight that um, the Lord finds us one more time in the presence of the Lord, in the house of the Lord tonight, able to have the activity of our limbs, to clap our hands, to raise our voices, and to glorify the great God that we serve, because without him we can do nothing, but with him all things are possible. I quoted to you the scripture uh, this morning where it says in one place, in that day they shall say praise the Lord, which is more than this a admonition of greeting. It is a command to glorify God and to thank him, amen, and to give him the glory for what he's done. Can the church say amen? I want to call your attention tonight to two places, if you'd be so kind. Uh, if you would get um, 1 Peter chapter 3, 
in your hands, and we're interested in verses numbers 12 through 14. And we want you to get Psalms number 34. Psalms 34, and we are interested in verses 15 as a place to start. Praise the Lord. I don't intend on holding you very long. You should get out by 12 o'clock tonight. You know I'm just kidding tonight. You will be home well before that. For I'm not a long-winded preacher by any means. My preaching style does not lend to longevity. Can the church say amen? Praise the Lord. All right, let's read here in um, verses numbers 12. He says, for the eyes of the Lord over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil who is he that will hate you harm you excuse me if ye be followers of that which is good but and if ye suffer for righteousness sake happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Can the church say amen? Let's go now to Psalms 34, verses numbers 15 to start. It says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Can the church say amen? Somebody say cry. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, my God, and we bless you tonight, for your word tonight is true. It's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. There's nothing that is too hard for the Lord. For we look unto thee, O God, we look, my God, that you may touch us with a coal from off of thine altar, Lord. Come and speak to this thy so great a people. Make us into what you would have us to be. Guide us, O Lord. We look unto thee, for we are nothing without you. You are everything, Lord. And we bow our knee unto the Father of lights, in whom there is no variable, neither the shadow of turning. You get the glory. You get the praise right now. Speak to us, O Lord. Encourage our hearts. We give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord again. These are certainly wonderful words tonight. We have heard and have read from and read, as it were, in your hearing concerning the provision of God. Somebody say provision. Speaking to the fact that the Lord hears the children of God. I want to talk to you from this thought, pulling these two verses that were approximately written probably somewhere between a thousand years of separation or so, yet speaking specifically to the same condition and the same, as it were, provision of God over the children of men. But we want to use this thought, the Lord hears your cry. The Lord hears your cry. Can the church say amen? How, how often do many people feel that God somehow in the midst of where they're at and what they're dealing with and what they're feeling, they have somehow been left abandoned. They have been left somewhat on the back burner, if you please. But yet these verses tonight, I believe, encourage us, help us to understand the fact that in spite of all things, in spite of anything that we may have to deal with, saints, the Lord is attentive. The scripture said, the eyes of the Lord here are, as it were, over the righteous, signifying that God hoovers or he hovers over 
us. The righteous has to do with those that have been made righteous, who have made a covenant with him through, amen, the New Testament plan of salvation, have been justified and are being glorified as we continue to walk with God in this world, being made more like him. It signals the fact that we are allowing the righteousness of the presence of God to perfect us. And it is this condition that he speaks of the fact that God looks over us. And there are times in all of our lives when we don't feel that necessarily God is there. We might as well be honest with ourselves. But yet and still, in spite of all that, the scripture tells us in one place that when he spoke to his disciples, Brother Bobby, he told them, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Speaking of the fact that God was present with them. He was present with them in body at that particular time, but he would be present with them in spirit in the time when God would fill them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He would present, he would dwell with them forever. Can the church say amen? Signifying that his eyes, his sight, his vision, his provision was upon them. He was able to help them. He was able to give them what they need. This should be an encouragement to all of us as we walk in this world. We should understand that in spite of any situation that we may find ourselves in, when we may feel abandoned, God is there watching over us. He goes on and tells us in this particular verse, and his ears, thank God, this is what I would like to call, what theologians have called an anthropomorphism, which has to do with Brother Bert as ascribing human characteristics to a deity. God has no ears because he's a spirit. Can the church say amen? He has no eyes but he, because he's a spirit. Amen. He is, amen, not in a physical form. He is a spirit that fills all space and time. Amen. But he uses uh, terminologies that relate to us so we can understand how he works with us. Can the church say amen? He speaks to us in ways that we can uh, connect with him and understand that in the midst of everything, he sees us. Can the church say amen? And not only does he see us, he hears us. Praise the Lord. So we have to understand tonight, saints, that this world that we are in seems to, amen, have an allure that it tries to pull us back. Praise the Lord. And I'm trying, I'm, I don't, I'm trying to calm down here, but it tries to pull us back sometimes, saints, from, praise the Lord, from, our, uh, from where we should be and, amen, from the, from the understanding that we need to allow the Lord to uh, help us understand that he's with us and he's helping us. Praise the Lord. I heard a lot of testimonies tonight about the fact, amen, that the, uh, the storm came through and it seems to be, amen, that this scripture was evident, amen, even in this, uh, this weekend past, how, amen, his eyes were over the children of God. Praise the Lord. And nobody got hurt. Praise the Lord. He kept us, amen, from any hurt, harm, or danger. Amen. And in many cases, he kept our property safe. Why? Amen. Because God in the midst, as he's moving in the atmosphere, he is watching over his children. Praise the Lord. He is, uh, how can I say, keeping provision over us. He's helping us understand that when we cry, he hears us. It is John, saints, that says in one place that if we believe he hears us when we pray, we have the petitions that we desire of him. How many times have you prayed and praised the Lord and you waited on the Lord and it didn't seem like it was going to come? Praise the Lord. And you almost gave up, but then you prayed that last time. Amen. And all of a sudden the Lord came right Praise the Lord when you needed him. And I want you to know it is because, amen, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto our, into his prayers and to our prayers and what we need from God. Because I want you to know if you haven't got to it yet, praise the Lord, you're going to get to a place where you need the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And things are going to be such, amen, hallelujah, that our good looks, praise the Lord, or our, amen, our abilities will not be able to get us out of it. But we need the Lord to show up. 
And the church say hallelujah. And I'm glad tonight to try to encourage us that we can call upon him, saints, because, uh, amen, he is nigh even in our mouth, even hallelujah. Amen, I talked about this this morning. Even when we don't feel like he's there, amen, he's still there. And it's sometimes, uh, amen, when we don't feel like he's there, that's when Brother Bobby, he's the closest because he's trying to get us to, amen, cry out to him. He's trying to get us to acknowledge his presence. He's trying to get us to understand understand that he's with us. Can the church say amen? Praise the Lord. But we have to make our mind up and say the Lord, amen, I'm going to keep crying. Praise the Lord. Anybody knows about a baby in here? Amen. I got to use this analogy as I try to move on. Children, amen, the one thing you will find out about children when they want something, amen, they persist to get it. Can the church say amen? One of the uh, first human Hallelujah. First human instincts that a child has is that when he wants something, he cries, praise the Lord. He opens up his mouth, praise the Lord. He tries to get your attention. And some of you mothers know the difference between cries of your children. Hallelujah. You know when they're wet. You know when they're hungry. You know when they're just crying to get some attention. Amen. And therefore, you come to them in different ways to meet those needs. But don't we understand, saints, God also understands that too. He knows when we really need him. He knows that we are on our last leg, but I want you to know he hears us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's not going to abandon us in the midst of a heated situation, but he will be right there for us. And it is ironic, amen, that Peter speaks along the same line concerning, amen, how David speaks in the other place when he talks about, as he begins this particular psalm, about hallelujah, magnifying the Lord and praising God because uh, no doubt David found himself saints in, amen, a tight places, but he acknowledged Sister Martin that God was with him, amen, even when the enemies, he talked about it in this particular chapter, praise God, even when his enemies were coming up against him, amen, I'm not going to stop crying out to God, I'm not going to stop, amen, giving God the glory, I'm not going to stop telling him I thank him for what he's done, and that is a a big problem, amen, that people do today. Whenever they find themselves up in a tight spot, the first thing that people do is that they start complaining and bemoaning their fate, amen. That's why Peter tells us, amen, if you suffer, thank God for righteousness sake, happy are you, amen, hallelujah, amen. Don't stop crying, hallelujah. If you gotta go through, amen, I would rather, hallelujah, go through with Jesus than go through with anything else, amen. So David picked it up here in the, it's this wonderful psalm that we have read so many times, saints. Uh, thank God concerning, amen, hallelujah, how we should look unto God. He speaks to us, saints, uh, amen, that we should, amen, magnify him and glorify him. Give him the praise. Uh, go back and read the whole chapter. You will find out, uh, amen, hallelujah. He was getting to his cry, uh, amen, but his acknowledgement of God came first. Uh, he was letting the Lord know, hallelujah, amen, I acknowledge your presence. I'm going to magnify the Lord. I'm going to glorify God. And I wonder sometimes, amen, do people understand, amen, hallelujah, what happens when we open up our mouth, amen, and we thank God for what he's done. That's a cry out to God. And we hallelujah, tell the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I, hallelujah, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to thank you anyhow. I'm going to magnify the Lord. I may be hurting in my body. I may be confused in my mind, but I'm going to praise you. Uh, amen. You see, the enemy tries to get us. Uh, thank God sometimes to feel like uh, the only time that we can tell God thank you is when we feel like it. Uh, but the time that we don't feel like it, Brother Bobby, hallelujah, it's the time that we do need to say something. Uh, I remember Bishop saying this years ago, uh, the time when you don't feel like going to church or the time uh, that you don't feel like praying is the time when you need to pray. Uh, amen. The time when you don't feel like reading is the time uh, that you need to read. Can the church say amen this morning? Uh, thank God this night because this is the day that we are in. Uh, praise God when we need to cry out to the Lord uh, and understand 
that he hears us, that he's looking at us, hallelujah. Amen, he sees what we're going through. Amen, he sees what, hallelujah, it feels like. Did not the Bible say he could be touched with the feelings of our infirmities? The scripture tells us in another place, saints, that he's able to succor them or aid them. Thank God that have need of him because, amen, we are living in a time, saints, amen, when we are going to have to cry out to God. Look around in the world. Look how crazy it's getting out here. Things are getting difficult. They say that the world is getting better, but I don't know what world they're living in. It's not getting better because the Bible said evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Amen. Not only do we have deceivers in the church, amen, we have evil men in the world who are waiting, thank God, to prey upon the innocents. Amen. But I want you to know even though they cry, amen, David even speaks about it in this particular chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. Their own devices, as it were, they will be snared by why? Because we cry. Hallelujah. Amen. Cry out to God. Hallelujah. And let him know. Amen. That you appreciate what he's done. Amen. As I try to close tonight, I want you to understand. David, hallelujah, had a personal experience with the Lord. Amen. Of how to get in contact with God. It wasn't that he was always perfect, saints. But he was perfect in his cries to the Lord. Amen. When he found himself in a tight spot. Amen. He would begin to cry the Lord is good and his mercy endureth unto all generations. Amen. I want you to know all we got to do is open up our mouth and say the Lord I need you. I need you. Not tomorrow. Amen. I need you today. If you haven't been there you will get there one day. So David speaks about it in this chapter about how we cry out to the Lord. Amen. He makes the point hallelujah that I'm going myself to make my boast in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Not by myself. The humble shall hear thereof. Thank God and be glad. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Amen. I come to praise God. Amen. Because, hallelujah, when we cry to the Lord, saints, it seems like my sermon changing all of a sudden. When we cry out to God, saints, in a locked hallelujah. Amen. The blessing of the Lord upon us. When we we open up our mouth and say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm hallelujah. I'm hurting, but hallelujah. Amen. I'm tired, but hallelujah. Amen. I don't feel hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. They talk hallelujah. They don't hallelujah. They, they talk hallelujah. You get the point. Amen. I'm going to still praise the Lord. Amen. Because he's good. He's good, not some of the time. Every time you open up your mouth, he's good. Every time we suck in a breath of life. Amen. The Lord is showing he's good. Yeah. Ain't nobody making oxygen in their backyard. Yeah. Amen. When those trees were flying around. Yeah. Amen. They didn't crash through our roof. Yeah. Thank God and cut our life off. God is good. Yeah. Amen. And how dare I how dare I tell the Lord I'm not going to say thank you amen a lot of people say they don't understand what the Lord has done for them but when I come in the house of the Lord I'm going to cry out to the Lord I'm going to tell him thank you me. amen because you've been good to me amen you brought me out of darkness into this mile. I'm going to preach to myself amen brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light brother Bobby when they blow bullets. Thank God was in your body. Amen. They didn't hit any vital organ. Somebody say the Lord is good. Amen. When the doctor gave up on the saints, the Lord was good. When he ran out on us and said, I don't want you no more. The Lord is good. He didn't walk out on us. I want you to know him. We got somebody tonight, saints. That's all. He ain't good some of the time. He's good all the time. Yeah. 
So David reminds us in the midst of his difficult situation, he was saying, I don't care what I feel like. I'm still going to glorify God. Anybody feel what I'm saying this morning? Thank God that I'm going to still praise him. Amen. My mind all confused. I'm still going to praise the Lord. I'm hurting down on the inside. I'm still going to praise the Lord. The doctor said I wasn't going to make it. But I'm still going to praise the Lord. Because he's a worthy somebody say the worthy thank God to be praised he's worthy to be glorified that's what David is saying in spite of everything God is worthy and some people wonder why amen when they're all tangled up on the inside amen I don't seem to get free but sometimes your freedom comes when you say the Lord I'm I'm on tell myself I'm not going to feel down I heard David sing so why thou it's quieted within me hope thou in God I'm not going nowhere hallelujah I'm going to praise the Lord so I'm trying to stop here and tell the saints in our day you may have problems but don't stop crying thank God don't stop praying we used to sing a song yeah saints don't stop praying yeah the lord is nigh don't stop praying yeah he'll hear your cry i've been down sometime yeah. but when i got down on my knees yeah. and i say lord yeah. help me i don't feel good i'm tired yeah. i'm confused yeah. but i made up my mind yeah. can i preach it now yeah. i made up my mind Saints, I ain't going nowhere. I'm not moving out there. I'm pressing forward. I'm going forward. We got to make our mind up, saints. We got to tell the Lord. I don't care what comes my way. That's what David is saying. Because in David's day, he had enemies all around him. They were trying to get him. But he said, I'm going to start. Bishop, I magnifying God. I'm going to get up off my seat. I'm going to get up off my hallelujah. My high horse. And I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you. Because you're worthy. Thank God to be praised. You're worthy in the morning. You're worthy in the noon day. You're worthy all day long. I don't care what nobody going through. He still deserves my praise. He still deserves me to cry out to the Lord. And when you cry out to God, you will find him. He'll show up right on time. He'll show up right when you need him. He won't show up. Brother Williams, a minute too early or a minute too late. His clock is never sped up. He don't get confused. Zip codes don't get confused. Hallelujah. Zip codes don't get confused. Dime zones don't get confused. He know where I live. He know where I live. And he's able to give me what I need. So when I cry out to the Lord, I can hold my peace and say, the Lord, you know what I have need of. This is what we're dealing with, saints. David is saying it's all right. Sometimes, hallelujah. Amen. People like people don't understand how to unlock the blessing of God in their life. Amen. David was not a perfect man. David had many problems. But the one thing I admire about David is that David knew where his blessing came from. Now, in the text tonight, as I try to close, in the text tonight, David, amen, is crying out to God because. Amen. I he found himself in a situation. His behavior. 
favor was not becoming, thank God, of what it should have been. Amen. So he says, Amen, I'm going to get to the Lord. Hallelujah. He found himself, he says here, as I try to close tonight. Amen. In verse number 11, he said, Come there. Thank God, ye children, hearken unto me. Amen. Hallelujah. And I will teach you the fear of the Lord. If you want to get God's attention, you need to hearken unto the Lord. If you want God to hear you, let somebody teach you how to get thank God daddy's attention anybody understand what I'm saying I got four kids amen and the one the oldest one thank God teaches the younger ones how to get daddy's attention amen we gotta come to church saints amen come up in here and learn how to call on the name of the Lord to get God's attention so if you wanna get God's attention learn how to bow down I, I, I hear the Bible saying yeah, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God amen hallelujah yeah, and in due season you shall be exalted I'm trying to talk to somebody somebody here been praying yeah, but your prayers are not being answered yeah, but you gotta make up your mind yeah, then I'm gonna keep on crying yeah, because I'm a child of the Lord I'm looking for something thank God from the Lord and I believe him to do exactly what he said there's no problem that God cannot solve there's no hurt that God cannot mean I'm trying to help somebody y'all don't hear me we gotta make up our mind saints anybody praying about something if you're praying about something you better keep on praying you better keep on calling because the Lord hears your cry he knows what you're going through he knows you're tired he knows you're hurting and he understands and he will not leave you alone I heard the songwriter sing never alone, never alone he promised never to leave me alone Sometimes you feel like you alone, but you're not alone because I heard, hallelujah, David and Peter sing that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are hoping. They got to our prayers. I don't care what nobody's saying. I ain't got to see nothing. God hears me when I pray. I believe the Lord saints. I believe he's true. I believe he cannot fail. He cannot deny himself. So when I feel down, I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to keep on calling on the Lord. I'm going to keep trusting the Lord with all my might and lean not to my own understanding. I ain't got to feel nothing. I could be hurting on the inside, but I'm going to keep on calling on Jesus because he's nine. He's able to do what I need in my life. He's got the power to give me what I need. So I keep on calling. I keep on praying. I keep on pressing because he's faithful. Be persistent. You gotta be persistent in your cry. Praise the Lord. I gotta stop tonight. We're living in a day, saints, where people give up too soon. I heard a sermon, a title of a sermon from a man who said, You gave up too soon. Praise the Lord. Don't give up too soon. David was in a problem. David was in a pickle. Thank God in this psalm. But he didn't give up, saints. He said, I'm coming to the Lord and opening up my mouth. Well, I don't feel so what? I'm, I'm tired. So what? God don't want no excuses. He want me to open up my mouth and say, Lord, I need you right now. Oh, I can't make it without you. I'm going to call on the Lord. You know why he wants us to call? Because somebody else, thank God blessing is hindering on us. Thank God calling on the Lord, Bishop. It ain't always about me. Somebody else may need some help. And if I stop praying, they may not come through. If I don't, if I stop praying, if I stop calling, they may not get no help. So I'm going to keep on calling, not for myself, but for somebody else. Praise the Lord. Don't 
don't stop praying. David said, as I try to close this morning or tonight, but in any way, praise the Lord. He makes the point. Now, I guess I got to give it to you like this because I couldn't go all the way through it. But this is a powerful chapter. We quote these verses so many times. But David understood how to get to the heart of God. He knew he needed some help. Before, but before he asked for help, he started what? Thanking the Lord. Sometimes the struggle, saints, is this one call away from being over with. Am I making sense tonight? I got to stop. So David here, as I try to close... It's making something, making a very, very powerful statement because he had a lot of enemies. And he knew he was outgunned. He was out man naturally. Saul was against him. Am I right? Wanted to kill him because he was anointed. See, sometimes people don't like you because God's with you. But the scripture said, if God be for you, who can be against you? You hear what I'm trying to say tonight? I don't know. I, had, I didn't know what to preach. I went in my office today. I didn't know what to preach. But this particular thought came to my mind. To open up my Bible and look at, the, look at some of these verses. And the thought was to tell the saints, the Lord hears your cry. See, the enemy is trying to attack our faith today. He's trying to get circumstances and situations to attack our, 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 our mind. But we got to keep crying out to God. We got to keep calling upon his name. Can you hear what I'm trying to say today? I'm trying to let you go. We got to keep calling upon his name. I'm not too loud, am I? Don't raise your hand. Praise the Lord. We got to call on him for he's nigh. Well, I don't, I, uh, well, Pastor, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't feel, I don't, God doesn't care how I feel. I mean that. If you can find a scripture for me and bring it to me in Bible class, say, see the Lord, he, know, he, 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 un, he cares about everything I feel, then I will relent from that statement. I will take it back openly. But at the end of the day, he doesn't. God operates in the realm of faith. Trust. David is not dealing with his feelings. David is taking his feelings and putting them on the back burner and saying, I'm coming to a God that's able to help me with it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm crying out to him. Because some people, some of the time, saints, Bishop, we feel like in the midst of everything that happens, I'm the only one that ever dealt with it. No. There's nobody in the world that's the only one that ever dealt with anything. <laughs> everything is common to man. It comes in a different package. It's wrapped up in a different, in, 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 a, in a little bit different presentation form. But it's all the same stuff. So David is saying, and Peter is saying, the Lord, eyes are looking upon us and his ears are open. One, one writer said prayers. The other writer said cry. Same thing. Deacon, when we get down on our knees and we cry, not just for us, we cry for somebody else. We cry for our children, for our family members. God hears that. You know what I'm telling you? And, and like I said before, as I try to close because my feet is hurting, that in the midst of that, we don't always see him moving. You understand that? We don't always feel him moving, but if we believe God, we can activate God's activity on our behalf. He don't do it too soon. He don't do it too late. He does it when he gets ready. Have you ever prayed? Now, can I ask you something? Have you ever prayed and thought if you prayed harder, then all of a sudden God is going to do it a little bit faster? You've been there. 
where you pray and say, if I just, if I just, if I just do a little bit more, God hears me if I whisper. He hears me in my mind. He hears me if I holler. <laughs> and he's going to do it when he gets ready. And he'll do it by my faith. So don't worry about how you say it. Just get the cry out. Just get, get the cry out. Let the, let, let the cry out to the Lord. And he's able to do it. Thank you, Jesus. I got to let you go. I'm trying to encourage you tonight because the, the world that we are living in is becoming constantly oppressive to us. Isn't that right? I, you, you, do you ever wake up and you say, I'm just tired and don't know why I'm just, I'm just tired of the same old, same old. Like you're tired of getting up and going to, but you know you got to go. Right? I ain't got no choice. Right? But there's going to come a time when, when, when we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about this world, the burdens, because we've cried unto the Lord and he's heard us. He's brought us through. Singers can come at this time. I got to let you go. I told you I was not going to be too belabor the message tonight. God hears us. That's what the two writers are saying. Two writers are saying. Powerful, powerful messages. He hears us. He hears us in times of ease. He hears us in times of trouble. He hears when we need him. His ears are open. You hear what I'm saying tonight? His ears. That, what that means is that God has the ability to see. Thank God for these children today. Amen. Clap your hands. Praise the Lord. He knows what we have need of even before we ask.